All right, we're going to continue on. And where we left off last time, sort of an interesting room where the ladies have walked in. There was a booming voice. And the booming voice said, In my hands, I judge the value of all wealth, raising up whichever is greater. One of these coins is a deception. Find it using only two judgments. And if you're successful, you will receive my blessing. It's basically what it says. So you've had a whole week to think about this. Ladies, what do you what do you think? Not all at once. <laughs> so we need to figure out which coin weighs differently than the other ones. Yeah, that would probably that would probably be the thing to do. Well, also, you... it, it could just be that it's a deception, so we could maybe see if we can perceive one of them to be magic, maybe not even real. Only I Good can observation. Do Somebody else can do that. Yes, remember when you ladies walked into the room, there was the, you know, the two statues on the left-hand wall with their hand, you know, one of their hand out and one, well, one of their hands out and it had three, three gold coins in it. And then there were three gold coins in one of the hands of the statue behind the altar also. So there's a total of, there's a total of nine coins. Could I cast detect magic to see if I see anything magic sure. early? Sure, of you any can do that. Yeah, yeah. You take a couple seconds. You cast a spell, and none of the coins are magic. There's actually I nothing. It, now I will say this: the the statue behind the altar it does have a faint aura around it as in you know like the whole statue is magical but none of the coins have any kind of auras that depict them as being from any school of magic or anything so that was one judgment now i guess we have one more judgment i don't think it was uh, i'll tell you this that wasn't a judgment so the judgment is Putting the, you know, putting, as the statue was saying, it will tell you which coin is fake, basically. So, you know, there's nine coins, and you put the coins, uh, whatever amount of coins in each hand, and then the statue said it will raise its hand, you know, raising up whatever is greater. So, obviously, if one hand goes up higher than the other... That would that would tell you something. And then you gotta find the coin that is not magical. Well so it's grabbing all of the coins and trying to figure out which ones yeah, what we can do is is figure out take at least one away that we figure isn't it, and then distribute the coins in half, one in one hand, one in the other. And then whatever hand goes up, then we know we have more of a chance of picking out from the hand that's up. It'll bring it down to a fewer choices. So can we look at all of them? Do they all look exactly the same? They are spitting images of one another. They're identical to the T. Are they common gold coins or are they inscribed with like some kind of religious icon or that's a that's a good question but no they're all regular common currency uh, currency of of the aisles that you're on so you may see some you know fluctuations of currency and you know designs on the coins depending on what region of you know Valarian you're in but now that's all coins that you've seen here in Otari and actually the, the Starstone Isles where you're at 
we we could technically gather the coins and then find a nice stone to ping them against to see if anything sounds different. Well, you do that and everything sounds the same. I'll put everybody in the room because you're all spread out all over the place. What do you think, ladies? I think that it sucks that it's not an equal amount of coins. <laughs> I mean, do we really need this guy's blessing? I mean, a talking stone? Really? Do we really need it? <laughs> well, it, it could also mean that if we go past this room, that without the blessing, we die. Well, it's possible. That's a, it's a good observation also. I mean, everybody's had great ideas and ideas with identify magic, you know, detect magic and looking at all the coins and yeah. You can, I mean, you do I see take... that there are a couple of doors to the north. There is a stone door right here on the right hand side. And then there is also a stone door to the north. Or we could just take a coin out of our pocket that's not anything like the other ones, and that would be different. Could be. As long as it's gold. Could I waste a perception check? Uh, what would you like to do with your perception check? To, to observe the coins, you know, and I might roll a nat 20. I don't know. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, what are, What are you trying to distinct though with with the coins? You're trying to see if you can tell if there's anything different about any of them, or because yeah. they all look identical. Weight, uh, looks, um, material. If one's made out of a different material, you know, right. stuff like that. You can give me a uh, give me a roll in the tower. Take your uh, perception roll and drop it into the tower. Okay. Wait, drop sure. it into the tower? Yes, the dice tower in the lower right-hand corner. Oh, okay. Yep. And when you do that, it will be invisible to you, but only I can see it. It'll be invisible to everyone. <clears throat> and you would just drag and drop it over into the tower. Pretty good roll, but you give them a good once over, and they're all they all feel the same, they all weigh the same, they all have the same. Give them a little bite, you know, it's all the same type of softness for the gold. Don't break any teeth, though. <laughs> but yeah, they, they seem like they are identical to one another, but there are nine coins, and you checked all nine coins. You can bypass it if you'd like. I mean, there's nothing, you know, there's no flashing neon signs above the statue saying you have to do this puzzle or anything, but it's risk versus reward, you know? I'm going to leave yeah. the intelligence stuff up to my sisters. I'm, I'm <laughs> sitting this one out. I have to plump my butt down on the ground. I'm just like, You're just ready to smash stuff, right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem like there's anything that's going to hurt if we don't receive the blessing, so we might as well try, right? Yeah. Maybe we could do four in each hand and leave one coin off, and maybe it's just a fluke that one's not really fake. Yeah. Well, if you do that, someone give me a D10 roll in the tower. And... Okay but I'm not rolling, but... You don't want the weight of the world in your roll? <laughs> All right, so I guess you said you're going to load four coins in one hand and four coins in the other hand? Okay. So when you do this, you can start to feel a slight tremble in the ground as the statue starts to animate and 
both of its hands start going up equally. And then once it gets up to about the shoulder, its right hand goes higher than the left hand. So what do you think that means? Right hand is higher than the left hand. Well, hopefully the higher hand has the good coin. Correct. That is correct. So because it said raising up, uh, you know, I in my hands, I judge the value of all wealth, raising up whatever is greater. So obviously all of the coins in its right hand are real. So there is one of those four coins in the left hand is fake. And I did the D10 roll because I wanted to see if you were actually going to leave out the bad coin, you know, because you had one extra coin. So the one on, you know, the extra coin, that's good also. So you have four coins in the left hand, which one of them is fake. So you got a 25% chance now. No, it's better than that. So if we take one of those coins out and then put two in one hand and one in the other hand, then the worst case, it could be a 50 well, it, Yeah, exactly. That, and I'm glad you, you said that. So I'm going to give you an extra uh, hero point to spend this session. So instead of one hero point, you have two hero points because that is, that is a great idea. So yeah, you can take those four good coins out, set them to the side. I'm sure Belle will pocket them. Uh, <laughs> she loves coins. Uh, so you have the four coins in, you know, in the hand, the four good coins. And remember, there's two judgments. And this was your first judgment. So you still have, it's played out perfect. So you have another judgment. Well, if we leave the bad coin in there, but yet we add that fifth coin to that hand, it should equal out. So I guess you want to split the the four coins in the right hand, put two coins in the in the left hand also. Right, two and two. Okay, because when you start moving the coins around, the hands lower, you know, the, it, the statue animates again, and the sta then the hands go back down into its, like, default position. So, mm, you got four coins. What two coins do you want to put in the left hand, and what two coins do you want to put in the right hand? Wait, I might might be a little sluggish, you know, but if we do that, if we take two coins from... The other hand and put them into the right hand, the one that raised up higher. If the right hand goes back down instead of up again, we would have to shimmy through even more coins. No, you don't only have to shimmy through two because there's only going to be two coins in the hand. So, whatever hand goes higher, now you gotta. It's like what uh, your sister was saying 50 50. 50 50. Yeah. So before we go, so if we have four coins of unknown and mm -hmm. five coins of known, mm -hmm. um, the do we know that they need to be even in order to go? That they need to be even. So if we take one good coin, well, uh, whatever has the like what you did with the the four from four, the batch with the good coin obviously is the real coins and that raised up higher and the four coins with the bad coin stayed about shoulder level. So you'll know whatever, you know, batch of two coins will have the, the bad coin in it basically. Right. But if we take one, one unknown coin in the right hand and one good coin that we know, and then put two unknown coins in the left hand and one unknown coin out, then we should be able to tell if, all the three in the hands are good or not, or, you know. You could yeah, but you only have one judgment left. Talking three coins in one hand, that makes now 75%, you know, that you have less of a chance of guessing versus the 50-50. That's true also. No, I'm uh, saying you have two coins in one hand, two coins in each hand and one left out. So there's five coins total, four of which are unknown and one is known. Well, you know the one that was left well, out from that last time, you know that's a real coin. Because 
that coin, you know, if it was in one of the hands, it, I mean, it still would have went up or down because that bad coin was still in. You could have put all five coins in one of the hands and it still would have not gone as high as the hand with all of the good coins in it. So, yeah, that fifth coin is it's identified, you know, five coins are good. It's the four right. coins that were in the right hand that were Correct. one was bad. If we take the four unknown coins and we put mm -hmm. two in one hand, one in the other hand, and one on the table, mm -hmm. then we balance out the one that only has one with a known good coin. Yeah. Then we'll you be, can take a chance. That's a better, that's, that's better option. Better, no, Paula? I mean, because if, if both hands go all the way up, then you know that all the coins are good and the coin that's left on the table, that's going to be the bad coin. And then but if then the again, right hand goes... Yeah doesn't go up you'll know it's that's the bad coin and then if it is the left hand with the two unknowns then you have a 50 50 shot so true so what what coins do you want to you know what so if you want to do that what coin do you want to put on the table and I, I mean numerical coin one two three four coin one and two can go in the hand coin three and then coin four on the table how do you want to how do you want to do these coins One and two in the hand, three on the table, four in the other hand. Sounds good. 18. And then then a fifth one in with the number four to make it balanced. That's known good, right? Okay. All right. Sounds good. So where you put coins one and two, that it's so I would just imagine the right hand starting at the right hand it doesn't go up as high as the left hand. So now the two coins in the left hand, which was coin number three, that's good. Those are good coins. So now you've got five coins identified. Well, I'm sorry, seven coins identified because the left hand is up higher than the right hand. So you know that one of these two coins in the right hand is the fake coin. So I, I okay. could see what you, I, you were just hoping to get lucky to where that both hands went up to the same height. So yeah, that's that was a good that was a good one. So yeah, one of the one of the coins in the right hand is definitely fake because that hand did not go up as high as the left hand did. Does anybody have luck? Is there a luck roll? Does anybody have extra luck? Seem Bell would have luck. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So what, what do you think as you as you have both of these coins in front, you know, you separate everything, you take all the coins, the seven good coins, put them to the side. And then you have these two coins on the altar in front of you and both of the both of the hands of the statue obviously go back down also. So you got a 50 50 chance. What do you think? You think coin ones? the fake or do you think coin two is the fake i know you're hoping to not have to do any kind of guessing with percentages <laughs> but unfortunately yep you have to guess coin one or going two, or you could just leave and bypass and say yeah the hell with this and we could roll <laughs> i'd say coin one is real or fake Fake. All right. Or Let's real fake or fake or real or <laughs> now I'm now I'm just trolling you. Okay, so everybody's I in give agreement. Them back the first one. So everybody's in agreement. Coin one. Okay. So you put the coin. So as you grab the first coin, the second coin turns into lead the lead it turns into lead so you are so lucky you guessed coin one and as you guess coin one the second coin it turns to lead like i mentioned and you start to hear a and you feel like a, a slight rumbling as you can start to hear stone on stone grinding and to the north that stone door on the right, it raises up into the vault wall very slowly as dust and little chunks of rock hit the ground 
and the doors opened up. On to the next room. Well, see what the yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah. What did we do? We know what kind of blessing we got. Well, you have at least uh, you have you have eight real gold pieces. So I I will put eight gold pieces into the party sheet. And then we can just kind of divide that out later or, or whatever. So I will put eight gold into the inventory tab. And we will let you explore these other doors and stuff. As But you don't feel anything. You don't feel any kind of funny. You don't have any kind of funny feeling come over you. You know, the statue doesn't say anything, nothing like that. So... Yeah, as uh, as glory as you move right on by, you notice that there was a door open that you just walked by, and there was a huge chest in that room. It looked like a a, a, a very large wooden chest. Ooh, can I smash it? Can I you smash can, it? It's made of wood. You can smash it if no, you want to. No, don't yeah. smash it. What if there's something fragile in it? We don't smash things. We don't have to. Let me look at it first and see if it'll open. Man. You know what? I Actually, uh, I had Rye the player a couple of years ago, actually quite a few years ago, smash a chest, and it was a chest full of potions. And as soon as he smashed it, all this liquid started running. Running on the floor. <laughs> out of like 12 potions, there was like one good potion out of 12. Every, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, everybody wasn't That's very happy. So, yeah. So yeah I'm going to look you, at it and see if there's any traps or anything. Yeah. So, uh, as, you're, as you're doing a roll, uh, this is a small chamber. It's not very large. It, it's got right. the wooden chest, it has a, a symbol of a key on the chest. And, you know, as you're looking around with your perception, you notice that on the back of this chest, which the chest is actually mounted to the floor because you tried to give it a little nudge to move it, and it's solid. I mean, it is like, it is attached to the floor. But as you're giving it the old rogue once over, looking for traps and everything, on the back of this chest, there is a... Uh, like a massive contraption that has all kinds of gears, springs, pulleys, cogs, sprockets, wires. And it, to you, as being a rogue, it looks like it is some type of device to turn on or off something. So that's, that's what the actual contraption is behind the chest. And then you also notice that the chest is actually unlocked. Because you, you know, you get down there and get your mirrors out and angle the lights and into the keyhole and all of the tumblers are open. So it is, the lock is unlocked. All right. So I will, whatever the contraption is, if I can keep it from activating, I will, you know, put something between or whatever it takes to make the cog not move and then i'll just open it sure you open up this uh this chest and that booming voice you hear it again and it says congratulations you received my blessing as the chest opens up and there is this like really beautiful pinkish and whitish aura that's coming out and you look inside and there's some green in there as well and it's got a ton of coins there's a ton of copper there's some silver there's a couple of gold thrown in uh there's also a like a scroll tube that has a, a cap on it so it looks like there may be something in there and then there's a a very large emerald sitting right on the top of of everything and it looks like the uh it looks like the emerald's worth probably about 20 gold. But as for all of the the currency and the coins and everything, uh, it looks like there is uh, about 214 copper, 22 silver, there's three gold. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, quite a bit in there. And then I, I put the, 
the scroll in there also. Uh, so I believe that uh, we have a we have at least one that can cast spells with uh, being Kaelin. And you look at this scroll because you have your you know your you have cleric magic, or or yeah you have cleric magic don't you? Yeah, you have I, druid. Yeah, on. druid cleric. Yeah. So this is a this is a the type of the runic symbols and stuff. They look to be arcane from the arcane school, and you're not able to tell what it is. But this would be so you you could definitely it would be like looking at a piece of paper and seeing like the Russian language, you know, with all the C's and the D's and the funky characters and stuff. You would tell that oh, okay, this is this is a magic user scroll. So the scroll in this tube, you know, you take it out of the case, open it up. Oh, this is a, some kind of magic user spell. It's probably worth something. But yeah, and then you, yeah, you let it roll back up and, you know, you put it in a tube or whatever. But yeah, it's definitely a magic user scroll. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll divide the coins right now. And uh, I'm going to kind of even everything out. And there's the emerald. And there's also the the scrolls. So whoever wants to take those, you can put those on your on your sheet, or you can just keep them in the party sheet, and we can sell them later once you get back into Atari or whatever you decide to do. Now, is your detect magic still up? That way, we can see if anything like the it emerald. Is. Yeah, no, the emerald is not magic, but obviously, the scroll of magic missile is so. But yeah, no, I'll, no. she she beat me to asking about that. Yeah, yeah, it was still up. It's got got a good duration on it. But with that with that contraption, you notice that there's a lever, and on that lever, Gloria, it says on and off in common, and it's in the middle. No, I, I'm sorry. Actually, it's in the off position. You can turn it on if you want or leave it off up to you. But you're not too sure because all of the, you know, like I said, there's pulleys, cog wheels, all kinds of springs and sprockets and gears, and they're going into the wall. So, so obviously another... this affects something, yeah, in another part of the dungeon maybe. And has anyone noticed with the the lighting on? Has anyone noticed anything? I have. Um, what did you notice? Uh, either there's windows or doors or something yes. because I can see you uh, can. my light, my torch. Yes, can. there is. Yes, because you can actually. It's like little peepholes and you can look into a room with a beautiful like marble floor and you can you can see through the holes so it looks like there's it like people people here it could it could but there's a door there's that other door also the the door that you actually walked up to before you came into the room and that's a stone door. So. so I think I'm going to step back and use Mage Hand on that lever and pull it to on. Oh, on the contraption behind the wooden chest? I gotcha. All right. So, yeah, we'll say that Mage Hand, yeah, the, I think it's, what, nine pounds or something like that. So, yeah, your Mage Hand can easily grab it and take the lever and push it into the on position. And when you do that, you hear a couple of clicks, you know, because several of the sprockets and the cogs, they start to twist together. And yeah, you hear a couple of clicks and then you hear a couple of clicks further away and then a couple of clicks further away and then it goes silent. So you turn something on. Who knows what it is? <laughs> Release the Kraken. Yeah. So while you're checking out these peoples, uh, Rive, why don't you give me a perception check as you're kind of looking through and Twenty-one. 
It's a nice roll. So you can actually hear a couple. You can tell that these are kobolds. Yeah, you've encountered them already a couple of times. But you can hear kobolds talking. And you can't understand what they're saying. But you know, because you can hear two different pitches. So you can tell that there's at least two kobolds in that room to the north where you're looking through the people. You don't see them, but you can hear them. Gotcha. It, sound, it sounds like they might actually kind of be, as you're looking into the, the people, it sounds like they may be to the right-hand side, just out of vision of the people. But you can definitely tell that there's at least two kobolds in that room. As Sisters. I'm all animated with my hands and stuff, sorry. Yeah. Sisters, we, we got more kobolds on, on the other side here. Are those peepholes big enough to shoot arrows through? Sure, yeah, you could do it, but, I mean, there'd be no way to aim. Because it's just like a... It's like an... It's like if you ever saw them, I'm sure you saw the movie Porky's, you know, I'm showing my age, but it's like just a little round hole that you just look into the, you know, look into the hole. Uh, that's all, that's all I can say. But no, so you can't. So if we could get them to it's come not into the room and look through the hole, can, we could... Well, it's not big enough to where you can climb through it or you can, you know, aim or, yeah, it's just people. But if I could get somebody stupid enough to come look at it, I could jab a arrow through their eye. <laughs> yeah, I love the that. way you think. I love that. <laughs> so evil. I like it. That's up to you. It's whatever you want to do. It's not evil. It's logical. I mean, it's one less, you know, thing to worry with, and it's on the other side, so it's not going to do anything to me. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are they just on the other side? They're in that. They're in that other room. They, I mean, they're I'm they're pretty right. close. I mean, you can hear them. They're not talking that loud. But they're not right beside. Yeah, the they're people. not right beside. No, definitely not. Man. No. I was gonna pass gas through the hole. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> Jeez. You're looking at the hole and all of a sudden this mist of like green, just putrid green just comes through the hole and you're like, what the hell is it? And then, ah, you and get I, knocked out. <laughs> then I open the door, lob it a fireball and shut the door real quick. <laughs> oh my goodness, that would be great. <laughs> uh, oh, an alchemist fire, yeah. So did you want to, uh, speaking about Alchemist Fire, you were out. Did you want to, you know, during this time of looking at the chest, did you want to make a couple Alchemist Fires? Yeah, that'd be great. And then okay. I want to remember that I have a familiar, too, that can, that is here with me. Mm, yeah. With cat napping the last two times, now is awake. <laughs> and what is your familiar? The cat. The cat. Right. So, what do you think, ladies? Well, I think to the next door, and I'll I'll check it to see if it's locked. Check it to see if there's any traps on it, and how yeah. I, how I can open it very quietly. Yeah, these this door doesn't have any kind of lock. It, it just has a it has a lever to where you can open it. You know, it's like all of the oh my god benefit of losing weight. I just have so much flab on my arms and all. Ugh, ugh I hate it. So anyways, um, yeah, it just has an, an up lever. You can turn it on, you know, just put it up and the door will open. Like a couple of the other doors that you've gone through in here. There's no locks on them. Not like there was on the side. I'll do that and have my bow ready when I go through the door. Sure. Yeah, you uh, you open up this door and you move in, and it is before you start moving too much. I want to kind of lock it up. I just kind of want to give you the description first. So when the door opens, you know, there's like this creaking sound. There's the stone on stone grinding, etc. And this is a massive chamber. It, it almost looks sort of like an audience hall as you 
as you move in, Gloria. And there's a couple sets of stairs that, because where you're at, it's it's about a five foot drop, right? To go down to the, the marble floor. And then you can kind of see with your, with your vision, there's a, a large 15 foot wide set of stairs that's ascending up from the, the X pit that is, you know, here. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful room and it has a very high ceiling. There's beautiful pillars that are, you know, supporting the ceiling. Uh, there's all kinds of tattered decorative banners, tapestries, et cetera. They're all hanging from all, all sides of the walls. And, uh, yeah, it has a very beautiful decorative tile pattern, you know, tiles for the floor. Do I recognize any of the banners? Uh, it, it looks like they're just all basically banners of Otari and the scenery around Otari and stuff. You know, there's one of the, the big log plume with logs kind of going down it. There's there's a banner of the, the graveyard. There's a banner of the lighthouse. And then, you know, there's all kinds of other banners of old rulers and stuff of, of Otari. All right. Well, I'm going to sneak quietly in and, and try to figure out where those two are so I can dispatch them sure. quickly. Yeah. You, you could also hear some, some scuffling as, you know, maybe something was kind of moving around over to the right-hand side. Yes. What would you like to do? Lock that for you. Sneak in and shoot them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just a slight step down from not even but a couple of feet onto the floor, right? And uh yeah, you move in. You can start to kind of look around a little bit. All right. So as you as you start to move in, you can see the spear of a kobold kind of jutting around the corner. So right right where you're at, Gloria. So you can tell that there is a kobold behind this pillar. So let's roll initiative. Nobody got nobody has the elements of surprise because they definitely heard y'all coming in. You knew that they were there, so nice rolls, ladies. Nice. We have to make up last week. Oh yeah, we had two weeks of solid ones. Holy cow. Yeah, they were bad. Yeah, they were they were kind of I will kind of say they they were bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, nice rolls, ladies. So we will go ahead and go to round one of the initiative. And from behind this pillar, uh, it looks to be a female kobold appears. And she is going to run up. Let's see. That's, this is one action. So she's moving 5, 10, 15. And then 25 because of the second diagonal movement. And she has a spear that she, as she, you know, she's moving, she's carrying her spear. And then she throws it at you, Gloria, because you are the closest. And the spear attack. And look at that. She gets a plus 11. 23 is a hit. So you are also considered flat-footed because you have not had any kind of actions yet. So I'm going to put flat-footed on you. 
and uh, let's see if this does the damage automatically, which it should, and it does because it gets sneak attack. So with its sneak attack, the kobold, the female kobold does a total of four piercing damage to you. And then lastly, it's also going to grab a no, well, actually, it grabs a spear out of its pack for its third and final action because it draws a weapon. So that is it for the female kobold. Okay, so Thanis, you are up now. It is your turn. So you have three actions and you can see uh, where you're at. You can actually see a kobold here hiding behind a pillar. So if you attack that one, if you attack that kobold, it's going to get some cover bonus, like minus two to your attack. Or you can move and get into a, a, you know, a straight clear shot and have no type of negative modifier at all. Let's move closer and for one action, how close can I go? 30, 30 feet? Uh, yeah, whatever whatever movements you have on your sheets. Uh, 30 feet, yep. So this kobold is going to be flat-footed because yeah, it has flat. not had an action. So, all right, so you'll move up. All right. And I want to throw some fire at it. Okay. An alchemist fire, go for it. And it's also flat footed, so. So this would be my, I would say my first attack. So this would be, yeah, your first attack, but your second action, because you ran with your first action. That's a nice hit. A 17. Ooh, so the kobold is heavily wounded with seven fire damage. Very nice. And you got one action left. You have a third action. Let's uh, hit him with my sling. On fire this week. 20, that's another hit. Let's see if you can take the kobold out. And you do. The kobold falls. Doesn't even get a... Poor thing didn't even know what was coming. Oh, you're so mean to the kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Thanks, that sister. kobold... Yeah, that kobold is incapacitated and dead. And we'll pass it on to Kaylin. It is your turn. You got three actions. And don't forget right. also... Uh, and if you also have that extra hero point, so I'll let you give that to someone too as the as the night goes on and if someone's out of your points you can you can give that person a hero point all right kaylin i'll move all right so right about i hear sure thing and then now that i can see things i would like to attack okay which uh, which kobold would you like to attack? The male or the female? Males on the left, females to the right, and the females one hide behind the. Uh, I'm sorry, the males hide behind the pillar. I will attack the male. Okay. I don't think that worked. There it is. Okay, I see. And I also, I'm going to put flat footed on that kobold also. So that's a hit. Dear. Wow. Y'all are doing great. So that is heavily wounded. Yes. And that are that is all my actions. Yes, it is. So we will go on to Gloria. You are up now. And I will take flat footed off of you because now you're getting your turn. Okay. So I, I already had my bow pulled, so I'm going to shoot at the female, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's a female. That's another hit. Wow. And the female is actually nice. a little bit bigger than the males also. And so the female is wounded. You had a nice shot with your 
crossbow. I'm sorry, your short bow, and it hit for six piercing damage. The kobold, she staggers back. And I'm going to let another arrow go. Sure. Ooh, that's actually a miss as the arrow hits the wall and just shatters into a thousand splinters. All right. For my third action, I am going to jump back behind the pillar. Sure. Yeah, get some cover. No one gets an attack of opportunity on you. The kobolds don't have it. And I will approve that move. And we'll move on to Rive. So what say you, Rive? I want in on the action. It's time to <laughs> smash stuff. Smash. So I'm going to... I'm gonna, I'm gonna move 25 feet first, and then. Um, Ooh yeah. You have your pick. I know, I pick. know, it's so difficult. Um, I think I'm gonna attack the male. Finish. Okay. Finish yeah, he's him off. definitely wounded. Yeah, he looks like he's more wounded than the uh, than the female kobold. Too bad you can't pull three stooges and smash their heads together. <laughs> <laughs> that would be glorious. Like the old eyes with the V, you know? <laughs> All right. So let's see if your attack hits. So that is, uh, I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. I said that kobold's still flat footed and you, you hit with a 20. Nice job. Oh yeah. You, you basically take the kobold out. Nice. Give us a little description on how you kill the kobold. I aimed for uh, its ankles this time. I just wanted to just sever it from its feet, let it fall down on its side. Yeah, you basically just cut it down like a cherry tree. Yeah, it's dead, incapacitated. So mean. Y'all are so mean to these cute little, cute little kobolds. All right, so now we have all of a sudden you you hear a like something being projected through the air, and uh, hmm, let's see, Kalen, why don't you give me a d6 roll? One to two, it will be Thanos, three, four, you, five, six, Rive. Do you want me to drop in a tower? No, you just throw it right out there in the middle. All right, so your sister Rive is attacked, and and what what happens is, is as it as it comes from this side of the the room, you see that a uh, sort of like a little hatch has opened up from this protruding wall, and a huge spear is just launched out of it towards your sister Rive, and it will get an attack. And the spear does hit with a 19. And you don't take but only six damage, but you do, you know, you're looking like a pin cushion. You got a spear, you know, sticking out of you. So you do take six piercing damage. So now we're on round two and the kobold is going to take, it is going to move back. Actually, it's going to spend one action it's going to move back and yeah, it's going to move to about right here. Got plenty of movement left uh, and it's going to take the, the spear that it had pulled out of its warden pack. And it also has a, a short sword in its other hand and it's going to throw the spear at you and then go into like this like defensive position, kind of crouch down with the sword. So let's see if the sword hits Rive. I'm sorry, the spear. Oh, that is actually a critical hit. A 30. Holy cow, I think that's the highest roll we've had. So, all right. So, you're going to take some. Oh, you're getting good. And that's good on the rolls, though. Only three piercing damage out of a possible 12. So, that's good. So, you're still in the fight. You've got some life left. You get hit by another spear. So, now you're, you're looking like a pincushion. 
And let's see, that is the second action. The third action is, hmm, I really can't do anything. I, in fact, I think I will. I will move, take another move action and move to the uh, pillar and kind of hide behind it. So that is it for the kobold. And now, wow, everybody's, it's everybody's turn now. So Xanath, it is your turn now. Get back here, you little weasel. <laughs> <laughs> As I get closer, I can see the pillar better, but am I on the pillar? Is that the uh, pillar? Yeah, the, the, you're on the pillar on the left, yeah. So these darked out, you can see the, the stone. Yeah, those are the pillars. This is a okay. pillar here. That's a pillar, so yeah. I was trying to, to get... As I get closer, I should be able to tell. I'm trying to get as close as I can to him. Is that good there? Uh, let's see. Yeah, you can move. Let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, you can move up there. You can get within range of it. I'll prove that. Yeah, that'll get you, get you right in there. Yep. All right. So now I'm going to stabby, stabby. <laughs> yeah, so as you barrel around the corner of that pillar, the eyes on that kobold just light up like, oh, crap, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> oh, nice hit, 19. No, 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 19, no, no, 19. Wasn't that a song from like the 80s or something? All right, so you do a total of three damage with your dagger, and the female kobold is wounded. I'm assuming I missed that second stab. The second attack is definitely a miss. That's a critical miss. And yeah, that you just kind of whiff... And the kobold ducks as you miss its head as you're attacking it. Okay, so my familiar is also pissed off, and my familiar is going to scratch him. Okay, so does the familiar take your actions, or does it get its own actions? In I believe two? it gets its own action. Okay, so let me... Oh, wait, wait. Wait, so yeah, he gets his own actions, but I need to use one action to get him ready, so I'll do that next time. Okay, okay, all right, I'll sounds look it good. Up Brazil, so I'm done. That's my third. Right? And I'll go ahead and I'll get a cat token out and stuff for you. All right, so that is it. Kalen, you're up. All right, I'm going to move up. Sure. So just as you are about right here Kalen all of a sudden yes. your your foot goes through one of the stairs and you trigger a trap so give me a saving throw and I need you to give me a what kind of saving throw is it my bad so unprepared here give me a reflex saving throw and hope that you roll pretty high on it and you can get your uh, get to your reflect yeah there you yeah. go wow that is awesome so that is successful the dc was 17 so you're only going to take half of this damage so i am going to half 2d8 to you and let's see wow so half of 4 is 2 as you have a sort of like a bear trap, you know, kobolds are famous for their traps. And yeah, you step into this trap. It's like a mosquito, you know, stinging you. And you're like, what the hell is this? And you break the trap as you pull your foot out and you will take a total of two piercing damage. So uh, I'll add two wounds to your sheet. And uh, so as you break the trap, you are able to move the rest of your movement that you wanted to move. So you are good to go now. All right. And. Okay. Um, 
we will go ahead and cast this against him again. Okay. No, 26. That is a hit. Almost a crit. Very nice hit. Ray of Frost. You're doing well tonight. Yeah. Oh, nope, nope. Oh, yeah, I need damage, uh, but yeah. yeah I, I, see, yeah. I see it. I see it. I, so I'm sorry powerful. about that. Oh, sorry. It's no big deal. So you do a total of eight to the female kobold, and she is heavily wounded now. And I believe that is your third action. So we will move on to Gloria. All right. So I am going to peek around the corner and let an arrow vault go. Yeah, you're gonna need the. I don't. Can you see the token? All right. So we'll. Uh, yeah, I definitely can see. Okay, so that is a, a miss with your second attack, and then you have one more action. That is a miss also. Wow. So two arrows shatter against the stone wall. So we are to writhe now as you watch your sister just trigger a trap and just keep going. Ow, a mosquito. <laughs> we truly are related. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, storm. I should have uh done this i didn't realize it was a reaction but for my abilities i have no escape so i could have uh gone with my foe keep keep pace with it so oh. it wouldn't retreat yeah but um i'll do that next time so okay. i'm gonna give a swing uh let's see No. Ooh, you have a you have a hero point. You can re-roll that if you want to with your hero point. I'm definitely going to use that. Okay. Ooh, a hero point. Well, spent it almost rolled over into a twenty. Yeah, much better, much better. And I'm going to aim for its head. Right. Nice. You split it right down the seam, and the female kobold falls down dead on the ground, lifeless. The ladies are out of combat. I'm going to collect another horn. Sure, you can do that. Thank you. No problem. Hey, Rye, were you the one who took damage? Uh, Yeah. <laughs> Rod is actually taking quite a bit of damage. She's got 16 wounds. I'll also turn off lock so uh, you can move around freely. I'd like to go ahead and cast the heal on her so she can have uh, her some of her stuff back. Sure. Yeah, you can do that. And then in the uh, in the alcove in the upper corner, there are several barrels of that fish also that was stolen from Tamerville. <laughs> so it looks like these oh, are the cool cool cool. Kind of a lot of fish. Yeah. Nice eel. I'm going to check the bodies. Sure. Yeah. You, uh, you check the corpses of the kobolds and there is a little bit of treasure. They all have uh, like a shoddy, like uh, leather armor. There's, you know, a good bit of, there's some spears. There's uh, some short swords, all really shoddy, you know, quality from what the kobolds, I mean, they're great for them, but uh, then there's also, uh, let's see, roll me a D8, Gloria. Oh, very nice. There is also... 
eight gold amongst the kobolds, and I'll put that into the party sheet. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Unless you want any of the, the shoddy, you know, if you want a short sword or a spear, a couple spears, yeah, feel free to go into the items sidebar button and add whatever you want to your to your sheet. Uh, on our way out, we'll pick those things up and we'll sell them, but not right now. Sure. Uh, so the one thing that everybody does notice on the female kobold, there is a necklace that she kind of had tucked inside of her armor. And it's a really, really kind of cool necklace. It's it's basically, it's got a copper chain and there's like a, it looks like a piece of eggshell that is basically encased in this resin. And the eggshell just has some kind of like light, bluish, greenish, swirlish, you know, designs as it was actually part of the shell, but it looks like a, some type of broken eggshell. Nice, nice chunk, probably, you know, a couple inches in diameter. So a piece of dragon shell, maybe. Possibly. There's a lot of or things in shells. Shell. Uh, yeah, that could be it also. I'd like to cast the tech magic. Sure. It is not magical. It I has no magical aura around it. I have something called automatic knowledge that I just got. Hmm. And what I think the... it allows me to know something once a day. Oh, that's pretty cool. Automatic knowledge. I haven't had any of my players take that yet. So it's a general skill, uh, hmm. knowledge action, recall knowledge, basic facts, top of your head. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. So yeah, you've you've seen this in books before in your studies. This is definitely some type of dragon shell, as like what Gloria had said. It's definitely, you know, it's got a really thick shell. So that's how you could tell that it was probably a dragon shell. Dragon egg shell. But you know, you know, general knowledge as well. You know, yeah, kobolds do worship dragons. So, you know, kobolds do worship dragons, etc. And uh yeah. So that 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 actually could have something to do with something, maybe. Possible. We we take it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. we take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's just clarify. What kind of question is that? Well, I'll just see. <laughs> Did you say it's blue? So maybe it'll, it'll be a it pretty necklace like a, to wear with the blue hair. Yeah, it's like a bluish, purplish type of swirl in the egg. There you go. You want to wear it, right? I am very fascinated with it. I anything dragon, right? It's just like I want to defeat a dragon. <laughs> it will kind of match your hair, so yeah. You should make one for next week. All right, so yeah, this is the end of the first leg of the adventure, and it seems like you have found all of these stolen fish from Tamerville's uh, warehouse. You get all of that back, and uh, we'll say that we'll give you another another four gold, so we'll put it up to twelve. We'll. We'll divide the gold. Everybody gets three more gold. And then you you basically, you, you get back up to, is there anything else that you wanted to do inside of this, inside of the dungeon before you get back up and talk to Tamerville? Well, I plan on collecting anything that could be sold. So any of the, the lower, you know, it, it can all be sold. Yeah, that's what the that's what the other four gold that I added was for all of this shoddy, you know, cobalt gear, you know, and armor and stuff. So I give you a couple more extra we're gold. We're all so walking funny? out, and here's Gloria dragging like a cloak <laughs> tied full of crappy armor. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my god! <laughs> she tells me all these stories that 
she loves she does love treasure i can tell that as a player she definitely tries to max she maximizes the effort to get as much gold as she can that is for sure i will say that about about her and you probably i was gonna say you're shaking your head caitlin i'm sure you know that too so because <laughs> you played in real life with her <laughs> oh that's too good so you get back yeah, up to uh, the last yeah. last game we had. I had the character that didn't, you know, want it for herself. She'd give it back to the church. So yeah, this time <laughs> I get to be greedy. And the crazy part is that's just the stuff we know about. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard that too. I've heard stories about that too, Kaylin. Oh, that's good. So you get back up to the fishery, and. Tamily, she she meets you and she's all excited as as she sees you know gloria wheeling in all these barrels of fish and cloaks full of wrapped up with all these weapons and stuff and she says oh that's so nice of you uh so did you find everything you were down there for quite a long time I slap her on the back and I'm just like, well, it was a journey like none other that you had ever seen. I'll regale you the to the tale later. Uh, we'll have several hours of pints, just you and me, and I'll talk you through everything that happened. Oh, well, that's good. So I'll have Cookie, my chef. He'll cook up a grand feast for us tonight and we'll tell the tales of your expedition down into my small little warehouse. That was a huge, anyways, that was a huge adventure for such a small little room. And, oh, but anyways, uh, did did I talk about any kind of compensation for you or anything? Uh, I, my, I have a, yeah, I kind of seem to forget about things every once in a while, but if you could refresh my memory. I look to Gloria, my sister. I'm just like, <clears throat> <laughs> let's see. That was dinner once a week. For how long was that? And I then it was, it was how much gold each? Uh, and how and much gold each? Yes, I'll also give you 10 gold a piece as well for helping me. So what were, were those what were those little fiendish things down there? Were they rats or were they maybe dogs snuck into the cellar? I, I don't know. I didn't go down there. We'll have to tell the tale around dinner, and we're gonna have Cookie. He's gonna make a great feast for us. We're gonna drink lots of Thunderfire Five Thousand Brew. We're gonna we're gonna go all out, go on all out tonight. And oh, there's then, extra special we'll smoked young. fish down there too. Oh yes, there's. Oh, I'm so tired of seeing fish, honey, because we smoked fish for weeks for the winter. Ugh. Next time, I think I might just contract that out. But anyways, here is a uh, here's another ten gold piece for everyone. So there you go. That's been added to your sheet, and that's where we're going to go ahead and end this first leg of the adventure. And we will continue on with Pathfinder Two in the future. And you'll have, you actually, you've got quite a few gold that you can go and spend around Otari and stuff. So think about what you want to buy. And then uh, you can also put that onto your sheet and we'll continue this game in the future. So, because mm. I'm sure tales will come up as you're drinking and eating and getting hammered on Thunder Brew 5000 and all this other stuff. So I'm sure something will come up. So, yeah. Great job, ladies. I'm sure other fun. people will want to hire us. Yeah, possibly. You you could be, you know, the new heroes of Atari. I mean, there was a group of adventurers that actually settled and started Atari back several hundred years ago, and they became big names, and we'll talk about them next time. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and end it here, and we'll think about what we're going to do next. So thanks ladies for playing. It was fun. Thanks. Hope you Thank all you. had fun Thank too. You. So, fun. Yeah. So we'll, uh, I'll probably shoot out a message here uh, in the next couple of days and we'll kind of talk about the future of the game and stuff. So, all right. So thanks for playing everybody and uh, everybody. Thanks for watching. Sorry. I haven't watched chat mm -hmm. at all. So uh, yeah. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.